All right, guys, this is Jernigam here. We're going to be doing a quick video of more than 60,000 exclusive deaths so far during the UK uh, UK coronavirus. I think it's about old people's homes, and uh, we're going to play the video. One hopeful sign, the number of weekly deaths linked to COVID-19 in England and Wales fell to 2,872. That is the lowest level for seven weeks, according to the Office for National Statistics. But on a separate measure, which is called excess deaths, from March to late May across the UK, there were almost 62,000 more deaths than might have been expected based on previous years. And the elderly have suffered most from the pandemic, and care homes, as we've often reported, have been particularly badly affected. Uh, one care home in County Durham has lost 25 residents from the disease. Our social affairs correspondent, Michael Buchanan, has the latest. A survivor of COVID-19 in a care home where many have perished. Her family gather outside in part to clap the carers who had much to deal with. No one blames them for what's happened, so we've anonymised them. But we've discovered that at least 25 people have died at Melbury Court, thought to be the highest single death toll in a care home in Britain. Samuel Wilson became a victim of coronavirus in early May. His family believe he became infected after the home insisted he go to hospital for day treatment. In a statement, they told us, The home was relentless for a family member to take my granddad into hospital for a non-essential procedure in the middle of full lockdown. In my opinion, they took an unnecessary risk, a risk that cost granddad his life. The owners of the care home say their sympathies are with all the families who have lost a loved one. They say the place is now in recovery and that many of the residents have returned to health. But locally, the sense is that it's yet another consequence of a decision to put the NHS above the care homes. Coronavirus has killed more people in care homes in County Durham than anywhere else in England. Local providers told council and health officials in March not to discharge untested or COVID positive patients into care homes from hospitals. They were ignored. Instead, financial funding was at one point explicitly linked to them taking people with the virus. The owner of this care home, which hasn't had COVID, is appalled by what happened. I surely do feel that this was neglect. They knew how vulnerable this sector was. And I think if just with a little bit of forethought, collaborative, true collaborative working, we could have easily got through this without the number of deaths that we've had. More than half of care homes in County Durham have had coronavirus, a consequence of both nationwide problems on testing and PPE, for instance, and local decisions. In a letter seen by the BBC, the County Durham Care Home Association say the council has pursued a policy which has caused and or increased COVID-19 infections and deaths within care homes in County Durham. <laughs> 96-year-old Barbara Wells died of coronavirus in April. Immensely sociable, her family says she was thriving at the Stanley Park care home. But the place has been hit hard by the pandemic. At least 16 residents have died. Barbara's family blame the government, not the care home, for her death. Most of Europe was locking down before us. So why didn't we do it? If we did do it, I'm certain my grandma would be still with us. And all the other poor people who, who died in that home. Durham County Council vehemently denied that anything they did added to the problems in care homes. We followed national guidance and put in place support for our care homes. We've put additional financial support in place. We've provided PPE, we've provided training and support and psychological support for our uh, care home staff as well. Give me an example where the care sector was put ahead of the NHS. I have to think of an example of this with my head, sorry. That's the problem, isn't it? The NHS was prioritised. And the result of it is all these deaths and care homes. The UK government insists they threw a protective ring around care homes. Michael Buchanan, BBC News, Durham. Well, a report by Public Health England has found that although age is the biggest risk uh, when it comes to COVID-19, black, Asian and other ethnic minority communities in the UK are more likely than others to die from the disease. 
Our correspondent, Rihanna Croxford, has the story. One family, one household, with the odds stacked against them. No, 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 no. Abdullah used to collect passengers to his taxi, but now only picks up groceries. He's black, male, age 59, and was born outside of the UK, putting him at high risk to catching COVID-19. He lives with three generations in Milton Keynes. Feeling unsafe, he chose to stop working near the start of the pandemic and has no income. The government is supposed to really help them, but they've been ignored because there's no PPE, there's no help, there's no even proper advices. His daughter Khadija is a nurse, a key worker, and says she's been unprotected on the front line. The PPE, to be frank, is very, very selective, very, very selective. But it depends on where you're working. If you're working in a low risk area, it's fine. But if you're working in, the, in an area where you, you are in contact with those with coronavirus, I think it's right for you to have the right PPE. But Khadija's concerns haven't been addressed in the government review released today, confirming that people from black and Asian backgrounds are disproportionately dying from this disease. I put those concerns to the health secretary, Matt Hancock. Many people from black and minority ethnic backgrounds will be confused why it has taken six weeks for the government to simply confirm what studies have already shown, that they're dying with COVID-19 at significantly higher rates. Why haven't you done more to protect and support these communities? You're absolutely right that there's much more work that needs to be done, and this report shows that. So we're asking, I've asked the Equalities Minister, uh, Kemi Badnock, to take this forward and to look into the, the causes and what further can be done. Davida is a nurse from Birmingham looking for an answer. Yeah, it makes you a bit more anxious and thinking how can you sort of minimise the risk slightly? Can you? But I can't because I the colour I am and I can't change it. There are many factors driving these figures and they point towards socio-economic inequalities. An existing problem, a pandemic, has only further exposed. Rihanna Croxford. BBC News. What could one say, guys? What could one say in this crazy world that we're living in? We're going to try and do one more video before the phone dies. I hope it's not going to die me, but uh, there we are. So we've got the UK hospitals now. News. There are the nurses in there. It says that over coronavirus deaths told up to near 10,000 highest government figures to show. that are counting the last figures released by the office nation. 42,210 numbers, deaths recorded involving the, in the COVID-19. So the figures are going too quick, 32,66666. New date slows, lowest number recorded in weeks. Surprisingly enough, that video was quite short compared to most of them. But uh, thank you for joining this live stream. Give it a like, give it a comment, share it with your friends. And I will be back to do some more later. Thank you for joining me. Peace.